situated 100 kilometers off the southeastern coast of India, lies the island nation of Sri Lanka. A diverse multicultural melting pot, this land is home to many different religions, ethnic groups and languages. Yet for all the diversity and change that Sri Lanka has seen over the years, there remains one constant that we were keen to find out more about, and that is the ancient martial art of Angampura. Angampura is the traditional fighting art of Sri Lankans. This martial art has been practiced for thousands of years here, and despite nearly dying out, it's been passed down through the generations, and it lives on. The first written references to Angampura date back some 2,500 years. The martial art combines the use of indigenous weapons, hand-to-hand -hand combat and meditation. Angampura was passed down from generations of ancient kings, warriors and ordinary citizens, with the ultimate aim being the protection of the nation from foreign invaders. Pumal Edirisinga is a master of the art. Angampura can be divided into spiritual meditation, unarmed combat and armed combat. When the British colonised Sri Lanka in 1815, the practice was almost lost as part of the country's heritage. The British administration banned Angampura due to the dangers posed by a civilian population well versed in a martial art. Flouting of the law was punished by a gunshot to the knee, effectively crippling practitioners of the art. However, Angampura was kept alive by a few brave families. There are 21 main weapons used in Angampura armed combat, so practicing and being accomplished in those using weapons will make you a notable fighter. Yet our senior gurus tell us that no one can totally master all of the different types of weaponry in one lifetime. There simply isn't enough time. Students set off on the long road to becoming an Angampura guru from an early age. One man who has dedicated his life to Angampura is 72-year-old senior guru Primasri Malimbadarachi. I'm still training. I've given everything to Angampura, but there are lots of things which I still don't know. I started when I was about 14 years old, so it's almost 60 years now, and I'm still learning. In recent years, following on from the Sri Lankan Civil War, the country's Ministry of Culture and Arts has taken action to support the survival and preservation of Angampura. Many exhibitions are now staged across the nation with the aim of increasing public awareness of and fueling interest in this martial art. There are a lot of young people who actually find out about Angampura through social media. They want to learn it and we believe that if you want to practice it and you are committed to it, then you will do well. Women have long participated in Angampura, even though they haven't always been welcomed. One of today's leading female exponents of the art is Nilmini Amarasinga. I started learning about Angampura from quite a young age. I was around 10 years old or so. Growing up, it had always interested me and I really wanted to learn it because I had an uncle who practiced it. It looks so interesting and challenging. But as I wanted to learn more about Angampura, the master who taught my uncle refused to teach me because I'm a girl. After that, I was searching for someone to learn from. Unfortunately for me, things turned out well as I met Master Pumal. It's not only people from Sri Lanka who are becoming more and more interested in this martial art. Angampura has recently opened its doors to international students who are interested in grasping the ideals and techniques practiced. Christoph Hoffmann, who hails from Germany, has spent the last five years traveling the world studying various martial art disciplines. I think here, with Angampura, the spiritual side still plays an important role which was a big reason for me to come here. I wanted to see something which is more pristine compared to all the martial arts 
which are already largely focused on competition. I think here it is much more about tradition, of unifying the spiritual with the body. This art has many parts to it. It's not only about fighting. There is also the practice of medicine, astrology and meditation. Every single Sinhala martial art is closely bound up with Buddhism, and this is no exception. The essence of Angampura is self-defense. The aim is to disarm an assailant rather than provoke aggression, in keeping with the Buddhist philosophy. The most important quality that you have to learn is humanity. Mainly, we train how to be patient. In Angampura, we teach students that you don't go looking for a fight. Angampura can be divided into four different stages of study. A student has to be fully versed in one stage before they can advance to the next. Over the course of three years, students are taught by their gurus the ways of unarmed combat before moving on to advanced unarmed and armed combat techniques. Those techniques include grappling and strikes to the body's pressure points, which is known as marukalawa, or the art of death. Considered the most advanced skill, it's practiced only by an elite few. Your technique is more important than your physical strength. How you move while fighting can determine the outcome. We call it Adi Marua. This allows you to block an attack very easily and throw a counterpunch back in seconds. In my opinion, the gripping and throwing techniques are very effective in this martial art, as are the attacks on pressure points especially when it comes to self-defense. The punches and kicks that I see here are more effective than in many other martial arts. Perhaps the most important teaching of Angampura is that spiritual and physical strength go hand in hand. And in today's world, that's certainly resonating with the increasing numbers of people who are taking up this traditional Sri Lankan martial art. I would have to say that what I love most about Angampura is the life lessons I've learned from it. The feeling that I can do anything and the strength to go forward with a firm backbone. Angampura has given me this and so much more. I can say that before I started, I didn't have much self-confidence. But as I began practicing this art, my personality and confidence grew. Angampura has taught me that I can handle any bad situation which I find myself facing, and I can look after myself. It's not just physical toughness I have learnt. I was struggling mentally as well. But the teachings of Angampura have helped me to overcome my fears and be stronger.